Today's video is about an old transistor voltage controlled oscillator for generating triangle, square and south of waveforms. It's not only an interesting and uncommon circuit, but we also hear how it sounds and what could be done to improve it. If you love analog electronics, oscillators or audio synthesis, this video is for you. This story started with a little accident, a midnight walk in the dark gone wrong. Yep, this video was supposed to be about stuff made out of steel, but I ended up having to rest for a couple of days. So with nothing better to do than browse the internet, I stumbled across this article on EDN. That's where I found this transistor-only circuit. Sounds like something that could live inside an integrated circuit, doesn't it? So I decided to test it for you, so we can see together how it works and how it sounds. Okay, this is the circuit and uh, I corrected some mistakes, <laughs> because always happen. And, um, and here we have the voltage. Uh, at the potent potentiometer at the input uh, and, uh, and here the signal and uh, as you can see here we are 70 hertz 73 hertz and here not uh, not symmetric but it's working okay after tweaking a little bit uh, adding a capacitor here because uh, this causes uh, some um, instability to the voltage here. It is one of the causes of the asymmetry. So I, here and here with these resistors, uh, I've been able to reduce the, the threshold and improve the symmetry. And as you can see here, the symmetry now is uh, acceptable. Indeed, it is pretty good, almost. <laughs> And uh, but we are we are at the very lowest end of the frequency. We are at the and the voltage. This is the limit of the voltage. 2.2 volt is the limit. The symmetry is perfect now. I improved the circuit uh, by switching from 12 to 15 volt uh, to have more headroom. I reduced this resistor and this resistor and this resistor to, so to reduce the voltage, uh, uh, the switching voltage here. And this deteriorate a little bit the impedance of this transistor. It's reduced significantly by reducing this resistor to 2.7K, but I see it works uh, anyway and uh, it provides uh, more range for the voltage here the input uh, in particular when we reach the maximum voltage uh, not that much uh, when we go low below the 2.3 volt and this is the maximum voltage uh, and uh, we can also increase the frequency so the range has been increased at the end uh, of the story uh, here we can have a range that goes from 2.3 volts uh, to uh, 7 Point eight volts, twenty hertz, and a maximum frequency of about uh, one point seven kilo hertz. Let's hear how it sounds. But clearly the problem here is this uh, section, the comparator that uh, switches these two transistors. So let's try to replace this with uh, 311 comparator 
and uh, and see what changes with this uh, component. While with this comparator there is a clear improvement uh, as I can reach more than 200 kHz compared to the previous limit of about 80 kHz, I see some problems. It doesn't switch as fast as I expected. I'll try to see if it's possible to improve the, the speed of, uh, the, of this transistor. Eventually, I reintroduced a couple of short guide diodes that I removed for the sake of testing. A diode connected between the base and the collector helps increasing the switching speed because it prevents the transistor to saturate. When the transistor is not saturated, there are less charges to remove from the base, so it turns off faster. And yeah, nothing changed, almost. It's still overshooting and uh, it's a little bit faster, but uh, not enough. Not even close. Ah! <laughs> so it overshoots here and uh, it continues here. Do you remember? It was here. In fact, now it doesn't overshoot. It is correct. Okay, I replaced this uh, two resistor with uh, 100 ohm. No magic smoke. It's still overshooting a little bit, but yeah, not that much. However, even though this change carries some improvements, the output of the comparator is still slow. Clearly, the problem lies on the fact that there is nothing that helps removing the charges from the switching transistors. So I inserted a totem pole configuration and a pull down resistor. These modifications show a remarkable improvement. Replaced the corner a resistor and uh, put the jumper, and uh, we transformed the generator into a very nice ramp generator. Let's record this. All right, we are 1.7 kilo. Conclusions. On paper, these circuits should produce a perfectly symmetric waveform. But after having tested it, I can say, yes, mostly, sort of. It's a cool circuit because of the variety of transistor configurations and its design symmetry, which make good use of the art of analog electronics. It can also be easily modified to generate sort of wave in addition to the triangle and square waveforms. Of course, the outputs need to be DC decoupled and buffered. But the critical part is the comparator Schmidt trigger. We saw that replacing it with a comparator like the LM311 better results can be achieved. Still, the output remains low and adding a transistor totem pole configuration dramatically improves performance. I'm sure with some tweaking it can be pushed even further. Or maybe the LM311 could be replaced with a version that has a push-pull output. This video was a little bit technical, so to say, uh, but I hope you find it interesting anyway. If so, hit the thumb up icon and uh, consider to subscribe if you haven't done yet. And if you subscribe, remember to hit the bell icon, otherwise YouTube won't tell you when new videos are up. Uh, yes, I know, it's a quirk, but uh, it's YouTube. And uh, for now, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye! So let's try to understand how this circuit works. Here we have the 
input voltage, uh, the input control voltage, uh, and here we have the output uh, from uh, which the waveform, uh, the triangle waveform comes from. And uh, of course we need uh, an, a, an external buffer here because here we have a pretty high impedance. And the first stage here is a phase shift. Uh, this part, this part here of the circuit, it works just in this way. This is basically a kind of emitter follower of this voltage. So a current uh, that so the transistor start conducting and the current flows through this resistor, this transistor and this resistor. So because the current uh, that flows through this resistor causes a voltage drop across this resistor and uh, this uh, current is the same that flows across this resistor the voltage drop that uh, happens here is the same of the voltage drop that happens here so basically we have this point that starts from the positive rail and goes toward zero and this point that starts from the ground at the zero and uh, grows toward the positive rail and uh, they meet uh, to the middle when the transistor is completely turned on. You can see this uh, at the oscilloscope, the, the pink trace is connected here and the yellow trace is connected here. The yellow trace is uh, close to 15 volt, uh, the pink trace is close to zero. The difference is uh, 2.87 volt and 12.8 volt. Uh, so and the input voltage is, is 3.8 48. So let's move the, let's change the voltage as you can see the two voltages follow the input as I increase the voltage at the input they reach the middle. It's very nice circuit isn't it? Next stage is this and this transistor with these two resistors with these two resistors respectively and uh, this is a, a common collector configuration as you can see so this is basically an emitter follower of this voltage here and this an emitter follower of this voltage here they works uh, they work uh, as a um, um, buffer to separate the current that uh, is required here from the current that flows through this part here so this point here follows this voltage uh, plus this uh, voltage drop here and uh, this point uh, follows this voltage here minus this voltage drop the diode the base emitter voltage drop here and uh, this transistor here and this resistor form a current source and this transistor here and this resistor here form a current sink a constant current sink and constant current source varying the voltage at the base of this transistor with varying the point of work of this transistor so the current that flows through this uh, resistor and therefore the constant current that charges this capacitor and the constant constant current that uh, discharge this capacitor through this transistor and these two transistors basically act uh, as uh, switches so at the beginning we have let's say this transistor that is uh, turned on so this voltage here is carried to the base of this transistor and set the point the current uh, source that uh, charges the capacitor here so the capacitor charges linearly uh, the voltage increase linearly at the capacitor and uh, at the given point we switch the transistor so this one goes on and this goes off uh, and the voltage here is carried at the base of this transistor which starts sinking a constant current from the capacitor that is discharged linearly so it forms the beginning of the triangle waveform and this is the voltage at the base of this uh, current sink Pink trace again, and at the positive rail, 
and here it's uh, the current sink again the pink trays uh, here and this part of the circuit is basically a comparator and Schmidt trigger that uh, the, the terminal when this switch is on and this is off and vice versa so at the beginning when the capacitor is uh, discharged here we have no voltage uh, so this transistor is turned off therefore this transistor is turned off because the base is uh, uh, left open and um, there is no current that flows through this resistor this branch here so there is no voltage to the base of this there's no bias to the base of this transistor so this transistor is turned off and this transistor that is turned off as well so uh, the current can flow to this transistor and this transistor is turned on while this one is turned off so because this is open here the base is uh, biased through this uh, branch uh, this resistor here so this transistor so this transistor is turned on and a current can flow through this transistor across its emitter and uh, across this resistor that creates a voltage drop here so when the voltage increases this voltage must increase uh, above this voltage drop plus this base emitter voltage drop here so when this happens this transistor start uh, conducting so this transistor start conducting as well because the current flows through the emitter base and uh, to the collector which uh, provides a current uh, to this branch uh, which starts conducting this transistor but most importantly this transistor so as this transistor starts conducting it uh, removes current to the base of this transistor that starts starving uh, and uh, the current uh, that was flowing through it decreases so this voltage here decreases increasing the voltage uh, at the base emitter of this transistor which is starting conducting even more so this transistor conducts even more this point increases even more this conduct even more even more and uh, and this transistor is turned off pretty quickly so uh, rapidly we have a change of status here and uh, this transistor turns on so it subtracts current from this branch and uh, turns off this transistor while this transistor is turned on because this point goes to zero and uh, the switch happens and of course when the voltage decreases and uh, goes below the base emitter voltage here plus the little voltage that uh, build up across this resistor the transistor turns, on, turns off again so this turns off uh, this turns off uh, as it turns off uh, this base uh, start con this transistor start conducting as it start conducting the voltage here increases interrupting even more this transistor so the whole status switches again pretty quickly